Are we recording? <laughs> um, hi guys, how are we doing? It's, um, going to take Neve Govers on, Neve Govers Counselling. Um, she's going to chat to us about everything that's going on with COVID-19 and how we can make sure that we're protecting ourselves more, most importantly when it comes to our mindfulness and our mindset. And I'm going to let Neve kind of lead this. I'm going to be asking her questions throughout, but it's going to be pretty much led by Neve. So Neve, first and foremost, what I'd like to do is just introduce yourself to everybody in the group and give them a little bit of a bit of a background information and why you are qualified to give this information. So absolutely no pressure there, Calm. Thanks very much. So um I guess well I'm so I'm I'm a, as you know, I'm a counselor, I'm a person-centered counselor. So I work with people one-to-one -one on various things. Um, right now I've got my own private practice, which I do for half of my week. The other half of the week, I work with adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Um, so quite varied, I guess, in mm -hmm. the different, I guess, the range of clients that I will work with. But I think, I think for a lot of my clients right now, and for a lot of people everywhere, obviously, there's just a huge increase in anxiety and panic that's going on so i think now more than ever um our mental health is becoming even more important to stay on top of and that's difficult because we're all stuck inside stuck at home out of our routines um and and all sorts so yeah so i'm i'm person-centered trained a lot of people, I guess, would be more familiar with the likes of maybe CBT or psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. um, person-centered. So what, 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 what that basically means, um, person-centered was created by a guy called Carl Rogers back in like around the 30s, uh, the 1930s. So um, what person-centered means basically is I work with people and I believe that when I'm in a room with somebody, my client is the expert in the room. Okay. So I'm never the expert in the room. My client's always the expert because because my clients know themselves, they're their own experts. Um, I will only ever know as much as my clients share with me, basically. So um, as person-centered counselors, we believe that every single one of us has our own innate ability to reach our full potential, to grow and develop to who, who we want to be, to who we can be. Um, but for some, I guess for a lot of us, some things get in the way of that. Um, and yeah, it really depends on certain, um, it really depends on, on certain things being arranged for that to happen. So, you know, what's really important for us is that um, people are accepted. So if we're accepted, then we feel more able to, to be, to grow, to develop in the way that we want to, that feels natural and organic for us to do. Um, and another really important factor is that we are, um, we're receiving positive regard from the people around us, the people in our lives. Um, and when that doesn't happen, I guess when we receive, when we receive positive regard that is full of conditions, mm -hmm. that then it stops being about us and it becomes about the other person. So then a person is then just left with all these different conditions in which they receive positive regard and then they can become, I guess, become the conditions in a sense. They can become that, that kind of person that other people want them to be, that kind of person that other people want them to, to act as or behave in that kind of a manner. So we, the, we can then completely lose touch with ourselves Mm -hmm. um, we can completely, we can just, yeah, we can completely lose touch with ourselves, what's important to us, because what's important to us is that positive regard, that positive regard is fully loaded and conditioned, and we have to have that, we need to have that, it's fundamental for all of us, right, we all need positive regard in our lives, but it needs to be unconditional. Yeah, so, no, I agree, I think there's some really, really valid points in there, and I think, especially nowadays, when we are so conditioned to do certain things and fit in with society mm -hmm. what society wants us to do essentially we forget maybe who we are and yeah. we almost 
neglect our, our true potential and what we can actually be because we're too busy trying to conform to what society and our, maybe our peers and our friendship circle yeah. wants to absolutely yeah um, i know you have and i'm sure like other people have heard me speak about you are generally the average of the five people you choose to hang around with the most yeah. and i think that has uh, a direct knock-on to who you are and I don't want to sound too blunt or too blasé about it, but if, you, if you're able to hang around with people who grow you as an individual, who you're able to lean in on and ask for help with, then you're going to be in a far better position than somebody who is surrounded by people who, who don't necessarily bring them up in life. And it doesn't have to be through any form of success or money or anything along yeah. Just as long as you're in an environment that's growing you. Um, yeah. One of the things I, I try to say to all my clients is we're essentially we're essentially a plant you know we're very fragile um and we need to be watered we need to mm -hmm. we need direct sunlight so we need to be outdoors um, and we need to eat well to grow um if we're not yeah. going to do that or indeed looking after our own mental health then how are we expected to grow ourselves as individuals and basically maximize the short time that we actually have on this on this planet because absolutely it, it, it actually it's not that long so how do we no, it's finite. It's absolutely finite. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think that you're, I, I really like that. I know we've talked about that before that, you know, you're the kind of, what, who, who you've got around you. That's so, so important. And I think for, for a lot of people though, it, it can, it, it just becomes lost that needing to be surrounded by good people becomes so lost because you become so focused on, I need to get this, I need to get this positivity, and I know I get it from that person, and I know I need to do this to get that, and I just, people get so focused and, and become really scared mm -hmm. of stepping away from that conditionally positive regard to go and search for unconditional. It, it's, it's terrifying when you've lived your life like that for so long. Mm -hmm. And I think how, how counselors and therapists can help is, is what we offer, what we offer, what I offer my clients is three core conditions that, that we're sort of based on and what, what, without these three core conditions, there would be no therapy, there would be no relationship. So we offer unconditional positive regards. So that is, um, you know, the opposite of everything that we've been talking about. It's what you're talking about when you're surrounded by people who, who accept you, who can love you, who see you, who hear you, that's what we offer. We offer that unconditionally. So, so you know, come in, be who you are. We, will, we, we step into the other person's world. We don't expect them to step into ours. You're so I always... Facilitating, huh? facilitating almost um, them to, to allow you in, to open up the door. Oh, yeah. To absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Allowing that other person to see you um, and learn to trust you and know that you're a safe person to be around and know that you're safe to let to let into their world. Absolutely. It's so vital. So we offer that. So unconditional positive regard. We offer empathy, which a lot of us know, you know, we all we all know about empathy now. Yeah. Um, and that is that is um, empathy is, is so it's so vital, it's so vital every single day. And that is basically saying to someone, you know, I want to understand you. I might not, I might not understand where you've come from or what you've been through. I maybe haven't experienced it, but I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna really truly listen to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one foot in your world and I'm gonna try it on. I wanna see things from where you're sitting basically and by doing that to someone you're actually saying to them i value your experience i value your world i value you i value your life and and out of that comes acceptance and they they finally will feel accepted this person is willing to to sit with me and understand me and hear me and listen to me and i don't have to do anything for that to happen yeah. you know so powerful yeah no it does sound hard i'm sitting here with goosebumps um it, <laughs> uh, something that you know we can all we can all kind of take a little bit of time through our day through our week and kind of acknowledge people because the way i've almost experienced it myself there's always there's always a reaction we we live in a very reactive world so if somebody's reacting to something that you've said mm -hmm. what's going on in their world first and foremost for them to react that certain way i mean you could have it could have been your tone or how it could have come across from you personally but i often mm -hmm. feel like when 
you're trying to do good and you're trying to help people out, especially in like the corporate world where, you know, they're, you know, trying to hit figures and projects and sales mm -hmm. and their management, their boss is coming down on them saying, look, you need to do this. And all they're doing is passing on negativity. Yeah. From yeah. above, which, they're passing on conditions, aren't yeah. you? Exactly. You need to do this or else you're not worthy of the job. You're not worthy of your role. Exactly. So how does that person then react to that emotion or to that instruction that they've been given? They're going to feel pretty poor, pretty weak. And, um, so they, they become internalized so much that it becomes how you see yourself. That's, it's a lot to do with, um, you know, that it then becomes your self-concept. It's who you are. You know your self-concept, how we see ourselves, how we, how we, everything about ourselves, our thoughts, our values, our beliefs, our body image, everything. Our self-concept is made up of all of that. And then these things become your self-concept. So, you know, um, I need to, I don't know, I need to never be late for anything. I need to always have a really clean house. Um, I need to, you know, make high numbers at work. I don't know. Yeah. You know, all the things that you're talking about, I need to do all of that. I need to reach these limits that are being set because if I don't reach them, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Yeah, yeah. So it becomes then how you see yourself. So if I haven't made the numbers today, how do I feel going home? I'm going to feel pretty crap about myself. I'm going to feel like I've not done a good enough job. Well, maybe you, you did all you could that day. You did your best. But in somebody else's eyes, it wasn't good enough. And so therefore, in your eyes, it becomes you are not good enough. Really, really toxic. And then that's, that's you know, we've all lived with something like that at some point and it's crippling it's it's really suffocating to live in that way yeah yeah totally get it understand so with with everything that's kind of going on right now because this is kind of the whole reason we're uh, we're jumping on this call yeah is to ensure people are in the, the right frame of mind the right kind of yeah. space um what from from my point of view um we need to be kind of continuing on as kind of not necessarily normalizing the situation but trying to continue on with what we are able to do in terms of getting ourselves outdoors because the whole kind of self-isolation staying inside um is going to drive every, anybody a bit batty and if somebody has kind of sitting on the fence a little bit with kind of yeah. mental health by staying indoors can actually have a huge negative impact a, on the huge. Mm -hmm. point of view um, I'm getting all my clients to to get in, you know, continue on their steps to get outside, mm -hmm. fresh air, and um, to break up their working day because we all are now working from home to some sort of capacity, yeah. and we can still kind of self isolate. We can still kind of keep our distance from people, um, but you know, the, it's important that we still kind of touch base with nature and touch touch base with what is kind of going on in the outside world, and that is kind of getting your steps in, getting some fresh air mm -hmm. from the outdoors and enjoying the sunshine that we've currently got right now because it's you know. uh, spring spring is here so mm -hmm. spring uh, has sprung fitness point of view and i'm well aware of kind of the benefits that that has on individuals mindsets and approach but i'm wondering is there anything kind of in addition to that that you would potentially mm -hmm. um, get or want or see if people can do something different to help, mm -hmm. help with that? i think i think everything that you're saying you know, it's all spot on. It's, it's, we're seeing it everywhere, aren't we? We're seeing it all over social media, all over the news. We're seeing it everywhere that you try to stick to your routine. You know, I see people saying still get up at 6.30 in the morning, get showered, get your work uniform on, sit, sit at your desk or sit on your sofa, which I think is, is um, I think is a bit extreme, but that's, that's a personal opinion. <laughs> I think, I think it's, I think whilst I, I agree with you that routine is so, so important. Yeah. I think right now, as I think it's easy to beat ourselves up when we don't stick to our routine. Um, so I think just to be <coughs> mindful, you know, of checking in with yourself. Okay, right now, if I was at the office, I'd be in a conference call or I'd be in the gym with a client or for me I would be with a client um, we'd all be doing stuff generally on a day-to-day -day. and it's easy to get up in the morning and say oh do you know I'm just gonna sit and have a cup of tea on the sofa and watch Good Morning Britain or whatever it might be um, I and I think <laughs> it's to BBC because I just can't be done with Piers Morgan <laughs> 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 
well i think but i think it's i think what i think is really important is that we don't fall into the trap of beating ourselves up for not sticking to our routine because out of that can come oh i feel really guilty now i've not showered today i've stayed in my pajamas all day okay so you have you've stayed in your pajamas all day and you've not showered and it's monday and you'd usually be at work but but let's not fall into the trap of going oh I'm really crap now. I'm really worthless. I'm, you know, I, I have no willpower. Because you, I mean, you'll you'll know this as well as I do. How easy it is to fall into those traps of yeah. beating yourself up for not doing it on that one day. So I think if we can all, you know, we all need to remember to breathe. It's so important to breathe right now because there's panic and there's pandemonium and there's stress and pressure everywhere. So I think we all just need to take time out and breathe and, and sit and actually evaluate, okay, what's important? What's what, not what the world is telling me to do, not what social media is telling me to do. Um, maybe not what my PT is telling me to do sometimes, <laughs> but I think what's important for me today, what, what do I feel like I need to accomplish today to be okay with where I am, what I'm doing, um, you know, and things like you're saying, like get out, you know, if you've got dogs, great, get out, go for a stroll. If you don't, just get out and go for a stroll. Even or if you just dog. Huh? What if somebody else's dog? I know, yeah. <laughs> um, even if it's just go and, go and sit and have your cup of tea outside for five minutes in the sunshine, even if that's all you, all you get done, Amazing, fantastic. Just take the little goals because this is going to be really tough. You know, we're we're now just at the start of it. This is going to go on for quite some time. Yeah. And I think if you you know if you start big, you've got to go big, and you've got to you know you're going to crash at some point. It's inevitable. Of course, and I think that's um, that's kind of any kind of fundamental pattern to goal setting. You know, people always come up with these big wonderful goals that they want to do this, this, and this by a certain date, and that's fine that they want to do so. But yeah. Um, when, when the goals become almost too big or too out with that individual's reach, then you have to then dial it back a little bit and look for the wins within their, for example, yeah. their fitness journey. Like, what are you actually doing right now that was better than what you did last week or yesterday? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thing, don't you? Like, um, in fact, I'm pretty sure I've posted something like this, but, you know, be better than what you were yesterday. And that doesn't necessarily need to be like a... Um, it could be journaling or it could be, you know, you've just gone to bed an extra 10 minutes <clears throat> before you normally do having a glass of water first thing. I mean, there are little small wins throughout the day that set yourself up for, for bigger successes. And I feel personally in this, this environment right now that it's important to, to respect and to acknowledge these kind of mini wins that people are needing potentially to put mm -hmm. in their day to day mm -hmm. rather than focus on how they would when they're working nine to five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, because it's totally, you know, these are unprecedented times. The, the, everything is totally different for us right now. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a case of comparing yourself to what you were doing last week. It's you're here today. What, what do you need to do today? Yeah. Um, what could you do today? And if you, if you get some, if you get one thing off that done, amazing, fantastic. And you know, if it is a, if it's a Tuesday and you end up having a glass of wine at six o'clock in the evening. That's okay too, you know, because these are totally, di totally different times, and and it's not about beating ourselves up. It's about, it's about taking as much stress that we don't need to put on ourselves, because there's enough stress out in the world right now. We don't need to throw any extra onto ourselves. It's about saying, I don't need that. I'm, I'm, I'm living, I'm breathing, I'm, I'm doing all the things I need to do, yeah. and it's about going easy on yourself. Yeah, absolutely, and I think um, as well. I mean, another day I got, I think. The my wife and I got caught in this kind of weird world where we were looking at BBC News, kind of that Boris Johnson five o'clock kind of hour thing that he does, mm -hmm. um, and then jumping onto our phones and then going back onto the news. It was just kind of almost like becoming a yeah. circle of just yeah. bombardment of all this information. Mm -hmm. We can only process yeah. as humans so much information before our thoughts basically run away with us and all of a sudden externalize and become the worst. So I think it's okay to dip in and out of social media. It's okay to dip in and out of kind of reading the news. But I think if you're constantly consuming all the headlines and all the information that's out there, that's almost where it becomes negative. And that's where the impact on individuals may actually lie. Mm -hmm. in that themselves. 
Absolutely. I think this, I think this right now is a good opportunity for people to step outside of the world that we've been consumed yeah. by for the past, what, 10 plus years, however long it's been since technology has just taken over. I think this is an excellent, excellent opportunity for us to put our phones down, mm -hmm. turn the TVs off. And, you know, I, like I said to you last night, I was sitting playing Scrabble for maybe about an hour or so because I thought I can't watch any more news I can't do it yeah. I need to switch my and it was you know it was a lot of fun and it was just simple and 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 easy mm -hmm. and it was a break from from how many new cases of positive people are out there you know what's happening now what time are the supermarkets opening at what are the schools closing we don't know it was it was a really nice break from all of that and I think if we get back to basics I think that'd be amazing. This is a real opportunity to kind of to to unlearn what we have learned over the past however many years. And this is what we need. This is what we need. This is what it's not. All we need is you know, food, water, shelter, clothes, maybe a bit of good company and a board game. So with um, yeah, love it. I think I think those are super valid points as well. With um kind of checking in with with each other um, in the case of you know kind of picking up the phone phoning a neighbor phoning a friend seeing how they're doing and um, sending a message to make mm. sure they're all right you know if they are yeah. self and um, seeing if you can go to the shops for them things like that Absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe kind of think about out the norm that that mm. i haven't just it out there or Mm -hmm. Well, I, I heard and I, I think I, I think it may have been on the news or something, I don't know where I saw it, but somebody had started um, writing notes oh. to, to neighbours, you know, because I know there's a lot of fear about the elderly neighbours mm -hmm. and we don't, we don't know how quickly this is being passed or anything, so it's about, you know, taking safety into account, so going to somebody's door is maybe not always the best if you've, if you've maybe, if you're maybe carrying something, I don't know. But so I heard that somebody had said that they were writing notes and popping it in the letterboxes and saying, you know, I'm from number 20. If you if you need anything, here's my phone number or you can pop a wee note back in. Or, you know, I heard somebody, you know, was um because I, I obviously for a lot of us, we can't see family members. I know I, I won't be able to see family members for quite a while now. So um, somebody was saying that they had started writing letters, almost like pen paling again, which I thought that's quite nice because, you know, writing this is it's nice. It's really therapeutic as well to sit down with pen and paper. Yeah. So I think just thinking outside the box, you know, if we can, it's easy to give in to the panic of we can't leave the house, we can't do anything and, and we can't, you know, speak to anyone. It's easy. It's really easy right now to give in to that. So I think again just breathe and think what what did we used to do before all of this you know we both come from a time where we didn't have mobile phones and we had a knock on our pals door to see if they were coming out so yeah totally. kind of back to those days yeah get it yeah it's quite nice to actually put um, pen to paper it's something that um i started not too long ago and just kind of getting yeah. my head onto a bit of paper i used to have i had this app on my phone where i kept like journal notes in there but i found that i was getting too distracted with notifications coming through and Mm -hmm. and you're on your phone it's like a big computer nowadays yeah and access your work so mm -hmm. um, i bought like a really kind of cool leather bound planner right. and it's, it's been a game changer for me and it's yes super cool so pen to paper that's a good point and yeah. also neighbors and just acknowledging the fact that you're there yeah yeah really yeah. And just, yeah and just getting out getting out as much as you can do as yeah. much as social distancing allows us to so I think um, we've covered quite a lot there. Um, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, is there anything like to wrap up with? If you were to give like three kind of golden nuggets, um, oh, like, maybe, like non-negotiables or something like that, whilst we're going through this uh, crisis, it doesn't have to be three. It can be one. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I mean, um, something. I that think now. I, I think don't don't forget to engage with your mind and your brain. Yeah. But that's that to me, because I know myself, it's so easy to sit down and stick on a box set and just get lost in it for the day. And then you've lost connection with what's going on up here, how you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're doing. I think we all just need to keep checking in with ourselves. That's the most important thing. You know, wake up in the morning, how am I doing? How am I feeling? Not if I got a cough, have I got a sniffle, have I got a fever, but how am I doing? How am I feeling today? Have I got energy? 
yeah. do I need more energy? Can I, if I got too much, do I need to go and burn it off? Or, you know, am I feeling a bit tired? Am I feeling a bit stressed out? Is there something I could do? It's just about checking in with yourself constantly. I know it maybe sounds mad sometimes to think, ask yourself how you're doing, but it's so important because we get so washed away with, like you were saying, you know, you and, you and um, Leona watching the news and then being on the phones, you completely get swept up in it. So I think if we can just remember, even if it's, even if it's just a minute, if it's just, you know, 60 seconds of how am I doing? What do I need? Do I want to lie on the sofa? Do I want to go for a walk? Do I want to do a yoga class online? You know, whatever it might be, just, just remember to check in with yourselves. Because yeah. it will be really easy to forget to forget that we needed social interaction, to forget that we needed, you know, fresh air, sunlight, all the things that, you know, you said is important to get. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, so easy to forget. And it's also easy to go, well, oh, I'm usually in the office nine to five, so it's okay if I stay in the house nine to five. It's, it's yeah. easy to kind of fall into that trap, but, you know, well, that blue sky out there. Yeah, I know, we should really uh, probably wrap this up and enjoy it ourselves, right? <laughs> But um, yeah, good points. I think checking in with yourself is important, massively important to anybody's kind of mental health and well-being. But mm -hmm. also asking the question to either a loved one or to a partner, just yeah. as well. As mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. to a list because we can assume how they're doing, or we can assume uh, they're okay or demanding. Yeah. But until you actually raise the question, and you don't actually know how the other person is mm -hmm. feeling. So yeah, ask yeah. questions. Self, but also ask. ask it twice you know twice is the key ask it twice because you you ask it once yeah i'm fine how are you no how are you how are you really yeah. how are you really doing ask it twice always ask it twice how are you doing a little, that's a little golden nugget for you there you go yeah yeah solid <laughs> yeah um but yeah so if you could just tell everybody um uh -huh. and you so websites maybe facebook mm -hmm. or if you've got a business page and we'll check you out and uh, mm -hmm. that's maybe. So people can find me, I've got profiles on the counselling directory, which is kind of like the yellow pages of counsellors everywhere in the UK. Um, you can find me on that. You can find me on the BACP directory. You can find me on the Psychology Today directory. I've also got a website, which is um, neveglovercounselling.com, cool. which is, is still under work. Has, has has been pointed out by a good friend of mine uh, <laughs> so bear with me on that but all my details are on a contact details email phone number all that business and um i think as well just to remember that you know the the support lines are all still open during this time so for anyone who who needs a bit of support or just needs a chat just needs somebody to talk to them um you know the samaritans breathing space all of those phone lines they're all still working so they're they will also be good for people to remember during this amazing well thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to thanks for having me oh not at all not at all i think you know it's just a way of kind of keeping the community together bringing yeah. it in their their field to to speak to everybody just to say that there is help out there and also to kind of give other people and information that's not always coming from myself it's very well in that case and obviously we're trying to build a community here and obviously with the way the world is at the moment communities and tribes whatever you choose to call them are mm -hmm. to our overall well-being and mental health so yeah everybody's there everybody's here to support one another and mm -hmm. other than that i think we're absolutely solid with with the advice that you've given out there <laughs> so yeah all good yeah all good on. Well, thank you so much and yeah, I'll chat to you soon. Chat soon. Bye.